Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to inform you that our honorable speaker, uh, honorable His Excellency, Jakaya Kuikwete has arrived. So please let us, you know, get organized. Let us sit down as we await the arrival. Thank you. We also have um, further announcement relating to the COVID tests. Uh, please note that registrations for site visits for Nairobi Expressway and, and Concert Techno Technopolis are still ongoing at the registration desk. Please ensure that you register if you intend to undertake site visits. And please make sure you register because if you do not register, you will not be able to attend. Um, there is no requirement to have a COVID test done for the site visits. I think that was not very clear. Those that are traveling internationally, could you please ensure that you have your CPR uh, COVID-19 test samples collected at registration area or at the Hilton Hotel? And please ensure that your sample is collected in good time to facilitate the issuance of the results in good time prior to your departure. And the third announcement is that there has been a switch of the meeting rooms for this session. Uh, initially, it was scheduled to happen in, in um, Lenana, and now it's happening in Savo. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our delegates, the high level delegation is on its way, arriving anytime now. Kindly let us accord them the welcome and the respect that they deserve. Thank you very much for your patience. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and uh, viewers online. Uh, welcome uh, to this session on the launch of the Africa Water Investment Program, FIDA Water Investment Scorecard. My name is Alex Simalawi, Executive Secretary of the Global Water Partnership of Africa and the Head of African Coordination. Uh, sincere apologies uh, for starting uh, with some delays, but we're going to get started right away. We have our distinguished uh, guests. Uh, we're really honored uh, to have uh, and to be invited by His Excellency uh, Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki, the Executive Secretary, as we all know, of Auda Nepad, uh, who has uh, convened us to launch uh, this uh, scorecard. Uh, and also, we are honored to have the presence of His Excellency, uh, Dr. Jakaya Kikwete, uh, Chairman of the GW Southern Africa and Africa Coordination Board, and also, as we all know, the former President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
My task is very simple, is to introduce the objectives of this session, which as I have, as I have outlined, are launching the scorecard. The session is also going to showcase how the scorecard uh, can be used as a tool to identify investment gaps in water projects, as well as accelerating transboundary repeater water projects. The session will also gain some insights from representatives of PIDA Project Pub 2 water owners, as well as uh, potential uh, partners uh, in terms of how the scorecard can be useful uh, in their work. And finally, through an interactive discussion, the session will gain some perspectives, particularly on how the private sector can also engage in the AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard as a tool to accelerate and mobilize private sector investments. Uh, and then this will be followed by a panel discussions uh, with some partners that have been very keen in driving the process, uh, contributing under the leadership of AUDA, as well as the African Minister's Council on Water, AMCO. And these will include representatives of the World Bank, the Development Bank of South Africa, as well as the OECD. And we we'll also have the Orange River Basin Konsenku, Executive Secretary, Mr. Lenka Chamae, who, as we all know, received your Excellencies, the Peter Quiet Award label uh, on the first day on the, uh, one of the Peter Transboundary Water Projects, the Losuato Botswana Water Transfer. So he will also share his perspective. Having said that, it is now my sincere honor and gratitude to invite uh, our Guest of honor, who has also convened us, His Excellency Dr. Ibrahim Maki, for his statement. Your Excellency. Your Excellency Dr. Jakaiki Kwete, Board Chair of WP. GWPSA Africa, former president of the United Republic of Tanzania, distinguished members of the AIP scorecard, core and technical working groups, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Welcome to this session, which is also a platform for a pivotal moment, but bears testimony to successful partnerships and collaboration to develop the AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard. We will today witness the ushering in this new instrument, which will go a long way in accelerating investment mobilization and enhancing mutual accountability in the implementation of PIDA water projects, which has come about as the fruit of a dedicated partnership between Auda Nepal and Global Water Partnerships, AMCAO, the Development Bank of Southern Africa, the African Development Bank, OECD, UNICEF, and the World Bank. Delivery on water investments in Africa is lagging behind the continent's economic and social needs and behind the overgrowth sectors. Under the PIDA water program, Auda Nepad and GWP made concerted efforts to mobilize submissions of water projects for the PIDA PAP2 portfolio. This bore fruit in that 69, out of the 69 regional infrastructure projects in PIDA PAP2, PIDA water projects now constitute 22%, 15 out of 69 of a portfolio, which is a significant improvement from the 2% in the PIDA PAP1 portfolio. So there has been a, an important change from PIDA PAP1 to PIDA PAP2 in integrating water projects. 
Further to this, Aouda Nepad has made consistent efforts to mobilize partners to support the transformation of the investment outlook for transboundary water projects. A critical mass of partners have mobilized under, under the Continental Africa Water Investment Program, AIP, one of the projects endorsed by the African Union heads of states as part of the PIDA portfolio in order to support country efforts on the regional integrated corridor approach for PIDA PAP2 and contribute to continental efforts towards recovery, growth, and resilience. As part of its strategy for PIDA PAP2, Auda Nepad has added the AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard to the suite of delivery instruments that support PIDA PAP2 implementation. And let me remind the other instruments, which include the PIDA Service Delivery Mechanism, SDM, which provides technical advisory service and capacity building targeted at the planning and early mid-stage project preparation cycle. The SDM feeds the NEPAD infrastructure project preparation facility hosted by the African Development Bank, targeting mid to late stage project development support. Secondly, the Continental Business Network, which is a platform network for addressing issues related to financing and risk management by engaging private sector expertise and financing for infrastructure development. And thirdly, the 5% agenda to increase allocations of African asset owners and institutional investors to cross-border infrastructure from 1.5% to 5%. Fourthly, African Infrastructure Guarantee Mechanism, AIGM, for enhancing access to risk mitigation products and FIPIDA Job Creation Toolkit, which quantifies the jobs and local industrialization potential of infrastructure projects. And six, the Virtual PIDA Information Center, which is both a window and a doorway into all PIDA projects and activities. All these tools constitute a system which supports the implementation of PIDA. The AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard, which is being launched today, was developed in acknowledgement of a critical role that water plays in contributing to Africa's socio-economic development. The intra-corridor approach, facilitating rural connectivity and economic visibility, including contribution to implementation of the Africa Free Trade Area and the goals of Agenda 2063. It is designed as a continental tool that will track sustainable water investments based on the following attributes. One, it aligns to and complements the financing theme of the AMCO, African Ministerial Council on Water, water and sanitation sector monitoring and reporting system. Two, it supports the implementation of the Continental Africa Water Investment Program, AIP, as part of PIDA PAP2 in order to set benchmarks and assist countries to track and increase the understanding of a water investment gap, display country level performance against, against high priority water investment indicators, and track African states' progresses in attracting water investments guided by Auda Nepad, AMCO, and partners. And lastly, it will be presented to the African heads of states on a regular basis in order to mobilize the highest level of political commitment and financing for water investments. The scorecard was developed 
approve a strategic oversight of a steering committee chaired by Auda Nepad and consisting of the AMCAO president, AFDB water sector, DBSA group executive, COMESA executive secretary, GWPSA chair, and a core group consisting of Auda Nepad, AMCAO, the African Development Bank, DBSA, World Bank, OECD, UNICEF, and GWPSA provide Added operational support with technical inputs made by a technical working group consisting of a critical mass of partners that would be too long to list here, but all of them played a critical role and consisted of research and analysis experts and independent reviewers. If I'm going through the details of this process, is uh, the reason is to show that uh, a strong homework has been done, but has, but has led us where we are today. The framework has subsequently been presented to and approved by the Heads of States and Government Orientation Committee at the February 2022 AU Summit, directing Auda Nepa to submit biannual progress reports to the assembly. We hope to work with the scorecard core group partners, GWP Africa, AMCAO, the World Bank, the African Development Bank, DBSA, OECD, UNICEF, as well as the PIDA Water Focal Points, project owners, RBOs, regional economic communities, national governments, and over 23 partners of the AIP PIDA Water Technical Working Group to prepare inaugural reports for the 2022 Mid-Year African Union Summit this July. Mutual accountability and tracking of progress at the African Union Summit makes the AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard a very key instrument in mobilizing for accelerated investments in intra-regional and transboundary water infrastructure projects. However, its successful deployment will continue to rest on the enthusiastic collaboration that has marked its development, a collaboration that was broad-based to ensure ownership and awareness with the partnerships that have been built by Auda Nepad around this tool, it's launched today, coupled by the parallel efforts of a high-level panel on water, is no doubt the beginning of an exciting chapter for regional water infra infrastructure investments in Africa. Deployment of the scorecard will commence with five countries initially, However, more resources are needed to scale up, and we are looking to our partners to rally around and enable application at scale. The scorecard implementation will also require the support of regional economic communities and river basin organizations, and for member states to take a leading role in giving information and data on which the indicators are based. I therefore call upon all the stakeholders that have rallied around PIDA, the DFIs, the regional economic communities, RBOs, member states and project owners, and the new partners that are coming to the table, including evidently and essentially the private sector, to join us through your individual contributions to amplify the case of what investments through the framework of scorecard. Together, we need to ensure that our African Union has those states consistently have a scorecard and the water sector and their sites and develop mutual accountability in keeping the subject of water investments high on the political and development agenda. I will end my speech by thanking with 23 plus partners who have made contributions to the development of the AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard. 
now that our efforts have been recognized at the African Union level, at the highest level, our work is cut out for us in rolling out the scorecard and shine the spotlight on water investment so that we can bridge close to US $50 billion investment gap. And uh, we are extremely proud to be under the leadership of His Excellency, uh, President Dr. Jakaya Kikwete, who has uh, provided us uh, with all the elements of motivation and who has pushed us to uh, 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 reflecting uh, with uh, strong uh, uh, data, uh, strong analytical work. So, Mr. President, uh, we are very proud to work with you and uh, under your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellence, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki. Uh, your leadership has been extraordinary, uh, and I've been uh, very fortunate to have also witnessed very, very closely uh, as you've been guiding the development of this uh, scorecard. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to invite uh, His Excellency Jakai Kikwere, a board chair of GW Southern Africa at Africa Court Nation, and former president of the United Republic of Tanzania to deliver his statement. Your Excellency. Your Excellency, Dr. Mayaki, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Global Water Partnership for Southern Africa and the Africa Coordinating Unit, of which I'm chairman of the board, and on, on my own behalf, I'd like to thank the organizers for associating our organization with the seventh PIDA week here in Nairobi. As we come together to put Africa on a firm footing for recovery, growth, and resilience through infrastructure post COVID 19. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a momentous occasion in the history of efforts to transform and develop the water and sanitation sectors in Africa. The efforts are aimed at translating into the people of Africa being assured of getting safe and clean drinking water and enough water for the social and economic sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, these efforts began in earnest in February, 2019, when the African Minister's Council on Water, AMCAO, directed the conceptualization and development of the Africa Water Investment Program, AIP. This decision was made, was made following the recommendation of a high-level panel on water convened in 2016 by the then UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the World Bank President Jim Kim. The, the panel underscored the need for Africa to have a water investment program. Through a collaborative effort of the African, of the African Minister's Conf Council on Water Secretariat, Auda Nepad, under the very able leadership of Dr. Mayaki, the African, the African Development, Development Bank, the GWP, and other partners this decision was implemented to the later. And the spirit 
the Africa Water Investment Program was put in place. As you may recall, and as Dr. Marquez just alluded to, in February 2021, the AU Assembly of, Af of, of Af Assembly, the African Union Assembly of Heads of State and Government endorsed the Continental Africa Water Investment Program as, as one, one of the projects of PIDA Priority Action 2 from 2021 to 2030. After the successful, successful development of the Africa Water Investment Program, Auda Nepad initiated another collaborative effort with the AMCAO, GWP, Development Bank of Southern Africa, African Development Bank, and COMESA, where the idea of conceiving and developing the water investment scorecard was mooted. Thereafter, a team of experts was put together by these, institu by these institutions to develop the scorecard. On successful completion of this work, at the last AU summit, in February this year, the AU Assembly of Heads of State and Government approved the scorecard. Here we are today, on a very auspicious occasion to witness the launch of the African Water Investment Scorecard. As Dr. Maki has said, he explained, this is a new tool for setting benchmarks, for, tra for tra tracking progress, identifying bottlenecks, and guiding actions to ensure the African Water Investment Program is implemented. is implemented. On behalf of the Global Partnership for Africa, I feel proud and privileged to have been a part of the development of the Africa Water Investments Program and the Africa Water Invest and AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard. But more importantly, Windy WP feel privileged to have been the Secretariat of the Development of the Africa Water Investment Program. When the African Minister's Council on Water decided that the, the program be developed, our, sec, our Secretary, uh, GWP was assigned to be the Secretariat on the development of this water investment program, Spore card. But also, but also we, are we are proud and privileged to be a part of the group that developed the water investment, the water investment score card. A wonderful tool for accountability on the, on the part of African governments, on the part of our partners, of our partners both bilateral and multilateral, as well as the private sector in the development of the water sector in the continent. I sincerely hope that sincere efforts or dedicated efforts will be made, will be made put in place to mobilize resources for implementation of the Africa Water Investment Program and that countries will be steadfast in following the outcomes of water investment scorecard in relation to their respective countries. Dr. Mayaki has said, the scorecard will be presented to the heads of state and government every year. They will see the progress that is being made in the respective countries. If there is red, no progress. If there is yellow, is work in progress. And if green, the target has been observed. 
So every head of state will be there with his, with his report, with this report, mentioning every country, and he or she will see the progress that is being, being made or lack thereof in any, in any of the various indicators that will have been developed in the scorecard. Well, I think that the best thing we can do is to follow up on the decisions we make and the commitments that we make. Last but not least, I want to say to thank Dr. Mayaki. He has said many compliments to me, but I think a lot of that is to him. Uh, Dr. Mayaki was foreign minister, prime minister of his great country of Niger on retirement. He was generous enough to offer his services to the African Union and took over leadership of Nepal. And he has done a terrific job, a wonderful job. He has completed his tour of duty with Auda Nepal. So I think it is befitting for us to, to appreciate him. To appreciate the wonderful work he has done over the years. The program on infrastructure development in Africa, PIDA, is what it is because of his work. So, Dr. Mayaki, we thank you for your, thank you for your service. You will always be remembered for the wonderful work and contribution you have made for the growth and development of our dear continent. Well, we wish you the very best. I know you may be retired, but not tired. One day, <laughs> President Chisano told me, you know, the definition of retired is simply putting on new tires. So, <laughs> so that's why so many, some of us find ourselves in, in GWP. Uh, two days ago, I was elected chair of the SADC panel of elders. So I said, oh, so I've become old man now to be chairman of the panel of elders. So, you know, all that we've put on new tires but continue, but continue to serve the people of the African continent. And I am sure, Dr. Mayaki, you will be continuing to serve the people of Africa and the world. And certainly Africa needs you, not necessarily in PIDA, in Auda Nepal, but in so many other initiatives that Africa is going to take. So welcome to the group of retirees, but to a group of those who are putting on new tires every day to continue to serve humanity. Thank you. Wow. Great, inspiring uh, words from His Excellency uh, Jakaya Kikwete. Another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you for your commitment to the African continent. Uh, and thank you very much for the leadership that you continue to provide. Colleagues, colleagues ladies and gentlemen online, as well as those physically present here, we'll now just take a very short uh, interlude for a short 30 seconds video. And then we're gonna have an introduction, an introduction uh, of a small presentation on what is the AIP PIDA Water Investment Scorecard. So a short video first, Followed by a presentation from Auda Nepad, Dr. Tawela Nyerenda, on the water investment scorecard. Oh. <laughs> 
No, no, we are not. We are not. We Good afternoon, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, and distinguished guests, both in the room and those that are joining us online. So in the interests of time, I will not run through the full presentation, but it will be available online um, and available for download. What I will do is just take the time to run through um, the essence of the scorecard, um, focusing very much on the framework and the indica indicators and how they have actually been framed. So we started this process by really looking at the AIP, looking at the aspirations of the AIP, looking at the aspirations of PIDA, linking that to Agenda 2063, and being very focused on the um, understanding that the scorecard needed to be a tool that would help us in terms of um, making an impact insofar as um, sustainable water investments that would actually lead to economic growth and development, very mindful of the fact that uh, the water sector, in the same way as other infrastructure sectors, has the potential to contribute to job creation, job reduction, to improved health, gender equality, and social inclusion. So that was the, the way in which we framed the scorecard. That is the impact that we would like to make in terms of how the scorecard uh, evolves and develops. And as the excellencies have said, um, how we would that to make sure that we mobilize the highest level of um, political awareness and advocacy um, to spur investments into the water sector. So we expect then that as an outcome, um, we will um, see um, investments into the water sector increased, and we want to make sure that these investments are sustainable um, and inclusive as well. So we envisage three key outputs um, that will come from the usage of the scorecard. We want to see the enabling environment um, for water um, strengthened, and especially looking at how do we actually make sure that the gaps are filled, um, that we are actually also looking at very responsive strategies, and all of these linked to um, the way in which the, the enabling environment is developed and implemented. The second output that we would like to see um, has to actually do with the uh, financing and investment gaps. I think these have already been quantified. It is a huge gap, but it is not insurmountable. And so we want to also make sure that we're able to adequately use the scorecard to improve um, the way in which we're able to have um, access to finance for water projects. And then lastly, we want to look at the performance of the water sector. So it's not enough for us to just have improvement in terms of financing but we want to see um, performance um, and efficiency in terms of how the water sector actually delivers. So the um, scorecard itself um, then rests on three fundamental pillars that are linked to those outputs. So looking at the enabling environment, looking at mobilizing investments, and lastly, looking at the performance. And from that, what we then is um, a number of sub um, pillars and those sub pillars are the ones that then evolve into the very specific indicators. Currently, the scorecard itself has about 30 indicators, uh, which is what we would use in the initial um, deployment um, that has been uh, mentioned as we go forward from here. Um, and the idea would be for us to sort of 
um, uh, stress test these indicators, um, see how uh, um, applicable and useful they are, and make sure that um, by the time we get to uh, the having completed that testing we will be able to agree on what the final set of indicators would be but you will see there that we have um, indicators that are looking at the water investment governance and planning we're looking at the investment climate social and environment inclusion government expenditures into the water sector um, oda into the water sector and then privacy and philanthropic investment and then on, and then on the performance side we want to look at um, the investment performance and efficiency and then lastly um, the sustainability of these investments. Next slide, please. So with where we are now, um, we are ready to now start um, the deployment um, testing of the toolkit. Um, we will be working with a number of partners in terms of collecting the various indicators. The way that the scorecard has also been structured is such that we um, looked at um, all the existing uh, data sources and all the existing uh, tools that are available out there and we found that um, it wasn't um, necessary for us to duplicate work that has already been done so working with our various partners to leverage statistics and, and, and data that is already collected through other sources and use that uh, to inform the scorecard thereby minimizing uh, duplication um, across the, the different entities so it really is a collaborative and, and, and partnership effort where the various partners contribute from the work that they already do to inform and input uh, into the uh, school card. So basically what we expect then is that um, we will, um, by the time we get to the EPF summit, which will be hopefully in July, we will have a preliminary report um, that will actually just demonstrate uh, the way in which the um, toolkit, um, the school card actually works. Um, and, then, um, and then we also um, want, um, as we progress throughout the rest of the year, to present um, the scorecard to our various steering structures, our various ministerial uh, committees and councils that are involved with the water and infrastructure sectors, and make sure that we um, get the audience um, buy-in in terms of the usage of the scorecard. Next slide, please. So I think this has already been alluded to um, in the speeches of um, our excellencies, but I think it's just to, to underscore the fact that um, in the, the idea of mutual accountability obviously requires um, that um, member states must spearhead the effort, um, partners will support, but um, I think the important has to come from member states, um, and we will basically use the scorecard to, to support and, and identify where the bottlenecks are and how they can be um, um, resolved. Um, and we, what we hope um, is that um, as we do this, um, member states will be able to um, adopt and adapt um, the scorecard and use it also in terms of their own um, national processes as well. Next slide. So I think in conclusion, it's just to highlight the fact that, that um, the scorecard uh, is not a one-size process. I think um, President Kipete, um was very clear in terms of the fact that this is something that on an ongoing basis um, in terms of this aspect of um, mutual accountability um, and, and really um, improving the investment output for water. Um, in the current implementation, we're looking at a horizon to 2030, but that will not be the end. We will have another horizon to 2040. So we see this um, scorecard as being an integral part of accompanying us in terms of uh, PETA water implementation uh, and making sure that as we go along, as we identify the bottlenecks, that will take the necessary measures and interventions to make sure that those issues are addressed, and to make sure that um, when we get to 2030, we will have a good story to tell uh, about Peter um, water investments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yerenda, who has also played a very critical role, uh, Your Excellencies, in guiding the structures that were set up. Uh, to support the development of the water investment scorecard involving the vital institutions that you see on the screen. Dr. Nyerenda, thank you so much uh, for your leadership. We are talking about investment. One of the partners that has been very central to this process from the very, very beginning, the Development Bank of Southern Africa, DBSA. We're now going to hear a statement from Mr. 
Chwene Ampele, who is the group executive for infrastructure, infrastructure delivery at the Development Bank of Southern Africa. Mr. Chwene Ampele, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, much appreciated and very important. Uh, okay. It's unfortunate we are already due to this uh, COVID-19. This is... So let me first appreciate the, 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 the presence and, and that is um, always the that is of, of, of our president. Uh, president let, 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 let me also then begin to appreciate Dr. Miali for, for always for, there for us, and as the panel has indicated, and, and hopefully we'll get to continue to sit uh, in a more wisdom, um, as, as we'll have much more time to reflect on these issues and guide us. So, and uh, let me also then appreciate or rather extend my greetings to uh, all the guests, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I wish to echo the critical uh, the criticality of the water sector to our sustainable development, and I think that has been uh, you know, the weight that I think should really occupy us all the time. Because all what we need to do is to ensure that whatever we do is sustainable and really begin to contribute to the environment within which we live. The reality of climate change, as well as the scarcity of fresh water resources, augments not not but also the threat to water security. As, as, as we take. And if and we in our rapidly urbanizing continent, we must put water at the center of our development. And without water, there's no development. And I think, let me put it that way. Without that water, there's a delay because we keep on. Because we, you know, we, we can't really continue without water. But what does it mean to put water at the center of our development? Beyond just acknowledging the water is critical to our existence, we must take decisive actions. Often, where we, where we in our, our money is, is a good indicator of the value that we place. Yes. So, how much is being committed to protect, protect the water, water, water catchment? How much are we investing today to make our water infrastructure more resilient to climate change so that we can continue to have uh -huh. water, you know, clean water for, our for, our water, for irrigation, energy production, etc.? The over 40 you know, billion US dollar funding gap. Required annually for water sector on the continent. As yes. it's unfortunate to, to testament to the fact that there is still a lot more than we need to do for water sector on the continent. And the and the bigger challenge we're facing with is that that we are not we are not, uh, we are not reducing this gap. The gap keeps on growing and growing and growing. And I think that's where we have to really be in a position to accelerate. Uh, to ensure that we really narrow this gap. So that we really narrow this gap. Yet among the challenges of the to be implemented, implemented despite having committed funds. In some cases, it's have taken too long to really be, you know, for them to be inaugurated. And I think that should really be something else that, you know, we should really, you know, fight against and ensure that where funds are committed, let's use those funds uh, to ensure that the implementation happens. So even if little, uh, we, even if the little that we have is not being quick to be utilized for social economic benefit of our people, let's try by all means to try and ensure that and that, that, that really happens. happens. So the water investment so that, 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 that need for uh, for the need for the need for more investment in the water sector and the on our beautiful continent. We believe that in order to facilitate the much needed investment towards the water sector at the continental level. It is quite essential that we have a holistic view of water sector, reflect the financial flows to the sector, such as quality and regulatory environment. The business environment and the promotion of water sector participation is very key. So, further, the development of the financial sector delivers local currency for financing for water projects is also, is also imperative. The public sector political and financial budgetary are also key things that I think from, think from this poker perspective, we're also then beginning to look at. So, this so these aspects are all embedded in the water sector, in the water industry in Spokat, and I think uh, we should realize uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that,
We are cognizant that as a development finance institution, we must play an active role in resolving our developmental challenges. Mm -hmm. This means supporting its development as well as implementation in order to realize full value for this initiative. We are increasingly playing an active role in this process. This is to help navigate some of the institutional constraints that lead to project failure in spite of funding commitments. This also includes supporting, preparing, and packaging projects to ensure that this project can see light of the day. We believe that the structured partnership uh, and, and the collaboration as we have in Africa Water Investment Program. Uh, through which the water investment scorecard has been developed will continue to be an essential element of success in improving investment in the water sector. We therefore look forward to working with the continent in the rollout of the investment scorecard and seeing and it will be a positive in terms of investment flows towards the water sector. So let me, let me end up the uh, point that the director and I appreciate also the team for the covers up to this level and I think that the journey, the journey begins. begins. The journey begins for us to ensure that uh, we really are able to feed our president and, 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 and our leadership, leadership to the outcomes as we envisage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ampere. And also, thank you very much for the leadership that you've provided uh, from the very, very beginning, as I mentioned, providing a development bank perspective in the process of developing this scorecard. And we thank you very much on behalf of the partners and of course, Aouda Nepad uh, for your continued support. Colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, we are now going into a panel discussion to hear from some of the partners that have been mentioned. Uh, so may we kindly invite uh, the panelists uh, that are going to be upstanding, that is from the protocol, uh, to come up front. I think we have four, three in the room. Uh, I think we can sit on the, on the other side. Okay, panelists, uh, may you just come to the front, those that are present in the room uh, for the panel discussion, as well as uh, let me invite the moderator. Uh, this is Maureen Inkandu, uh, who's going to lead us in the, the discussion. And also, I'll leave the task of introduction to uh, Ms. Nkandu. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alex, and uh, your excellencies, uh, ambassadors and distinguished delegates. Uh, and again, thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. Um, we also want to welcome, as we've heard, our participants who are joining us virtually uh, for this uh, important session. Already this morning, we've heard some very powerful punchlines, um, important messages from our um, uh, distinguished excellencies, as well as taking note of some important milestones um, as far as um, the continental Africa water investment, I mean, some of the PD projects and, and also um, how these are going to be um, actually impacted uh, by the, this launch of the AIP scorecard. So we'll now go into this panel discussion. Um, because of the uh, delay in us starting the program is going to be much shorter than we had anticipated and uh, hopefully we want to unpack various messages various approaches in ensuring the effective and successful tracking implementation and accountability of this important framework the panelists that are going to take us through this discussion are i'll start by introducing um the panelist that is joining us online with Ms. Kathleen Dominic. And um, Kathleen is the lead financing water and organization for economic cooperation and development OECD in Paris. Welcome, Kathleen, and thank you for joining us. 
And then uh, we have in front of us three panelists, um, Mr. Dominic Deval, who's a senior economist, Global Water Practice at World Bank. Welcome to you. Uh, Mr. Graham Chinyambu, who's fund manager for the Sadiq Water Fund at the Development Bank of Southern Africa, as well as Mr. Lenka Tamai, Executive Secretary, Orange Sangu River Commission, also known as Oristom. So once again, uh, panelists, thank you for your time. As I said, I'm only going to give at least two minutes or maximum two and a half minutes for you to share some insights into the lead questions that I will give. Of course, this conversation, as we've heard earlier, is not going to end here. These are important points that we are going to move forward as we carry on these conversations around um, the IP, the IP scorecard. So to get us started, Your Excellencies and distinguished guests, I'm going to be a little bit biased. I would like to start with Kathleen as a woman, and also thankfully that she's joining us online. Kathleen, my first question to you is, um, we've heard about the enabling environment Dr. Tawela just alluded to that in her presentation. So if we make a diagnosis of the strengths and weaknesses of the enabling environment for investment into the water sector, how can the scorecard contribute to that? Thank you, Marilyn, and hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Thank you. Excellent. Um, very good to be joining you. I was, wish I was there in person, but uh, very happy to contribute to this. Um, you highlighted the enabling environment of investment. And this is an area that we are increasingly focused on in our work at the OECD. And what we've seen over the years is that um, in the discussion, we hear again and again calls for more finance funding, but, but being realistic, realistic. Um, um, this financing will not materialize unless there are stronger enabling conditions on the ground. And uh, here in the AIP scorecard, it's important to begin to identify those indicators that help to For regulations to digital arrangements, both on the water side but on the finance side, and um, be able to track then over time how those conditions can change. And uh, what we've seen as well, and just to, to mention this, is particularly important for trying to mobilize or crowd in commercial finance. A couple of the speakers touched on how important that is. And what we've seen is that, in fact, commercial finance going to the sector is uh, a very, very small part of the overall financing picture. And in fact, we can't expect that that will increase unless, unless the need improve. So let me stop there. Thank you. Thanks a lot. The financing will be will need to be achieved through better conditions. So those conditions have to be uh, conducive. Thank you. I'm just going to follow up on that point by putting this question to Mr. Chingambo. Um, you know, a strong call for private sector, you know, public-private partnerships to leverage this financing is needed. And so, um, you know, would do you think that the current government structures, policies, and regulations of the water sector do provide that? Are they enabling enough? Are they conducive? Um, thank you very much. I think it's uh, it's a mix. Um, there are areas where governments uh, in, in the continent have made some progress. I think in the water sector, there's been some progress to recognize the need of, of regulation and putting in regulators in the sector. There's been a recognition that you need to have a mechanism of setting tariffs that would make it a lot more predictable um in in terms of what it costs supply water um and what therefore the the water providers are able to charge for that water in order to um to 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 retain their investments but also ensure that they can sustain the supply so there are some of those aspects that are in place however there are several areas that are yet to be uh, leveraged and exploited more. So the water sector, I think, has to be viewed from the perspective of the infrastructure needs that are there. And talk then in a broader perspective of saying, how do we increase infrastructure financing? 
And in particular, how do we begin to link with the other sectors in the economy? For example, the financial sector and what's happening in the financial sector. I think it was Dr. Mayaki that uh, talked about the 5% target in terms of pension fund assets uh, and, and being able to commit those towards infrastructure. I think with the water sector uh, in investment scorecard, part of what will happen is to actually relate the financial sector development in each country to understand the value of assets that are available and to look at some of the instruments that can be used uh, to, to ensure that there is flow towards the water sector in, uh, in terms of financing. And maybe let me highlight two positive examples that we see on the continent. One is Kenya itself. Um, I think just a few days ago, the, the Central Bank of Kenya issued an infrastructure bond that is worth over uh, $600 million. And they raised that money, and it, in fact, they had an oversubscription uh, for, of, of that. So that shows that with the right instrument, you can actually get local currency financing for projects. The other more recent one as well is in South Africa, where the government uh, has reviewed the regulation around pension funds, and, and they're looking to allow for more investments towards infrastructure uh, from pension fund assets. So that speaks to some of those changes uh, that are there and happening and that can enhance uh, the financing towards the water sector. Thank you very much. It's an important instrument there, and this leads me very well to the next question. Dominic, around the instruments and the frameworks that are currently there, because there are quite a number of them out there. Um, you know, as far as investment in uh, water infrastructure and other infrastructure is concerned. So, so why is the CIP scorecard, scorecard special? How will it be different? And also significantly, how do we gain a broad range of partners to, really to feed into the scorecard? Thank you so much, uh, Maureen. And um, I really I want to start with a, a very short anecdote, which is I started my career in working in southern Tanzania, uh, in, in places on the Makonda Plateau, uh, places like Tandahimba, which really didn't have uh, much water at the time. So it's a huge pleasure to be here, excuse me, opposite the, the President, President Kikwete. But the question you ask is about monitoring. Can monitoring make a difference? And from my experience of long-term experience, that was back in 92, working in, in countries like Tanzania and then moving uh, here in, in, in Kenya and working with people like Alex Simbawali on the AMCAL, is that monitoring really can make a difference. Uh, small tools like water point mapping um, in Tanzania have been very, very successful. But we also need, uh, at the political level, um, tools which guide heads of state um, on how progress is being made. And this scorecard, the AIP scorecard, by looking at these three areas, enabling uh, environment, uh, the flow of investments, and whether those investments are sustainable, is the sort of touchstone, if you like, of whether money is being turned into sustainable investments. And I think going forward, we've got this period of testing now, which is really key, because um, as uh, His Excellency Mayaki uh, explained, we were, we were, it was an expert team which came up with this, but we really need to test it with governments now, with, with people who work in water departments. And so this is a very exciting phase that we go into to start looking at uh, whether this will work and whether it, in, whether it really will inform ministers of finance and heads of state. But we, we at the bank uh, are really very much fully behind us. And we see just how necessary this is as well. Um, picking a different country, uh, say Malawi, we see that um, urban populations will quadruple are, project, are projected to quadruple over the next up to 2050. So just think about how much investment needs to go into uh, to just for urban Malawi, let alone uh, other aspects of, of that country. So yes, monitoring can make a real difference. It can inform heads of state and be turned into action. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dominique. And uh, knowing our complications around this launch, 
we've been touting this as a game changer. And you know, it's, so it's those insights, they are very interesting around what makes it stand out or what will make it stand out. And that monitoring aspect, tracking that progress, I think is, is, is quite significant. I want to come to you now, um, Mr. Lenka Tamaya. And first of all, just want to congratulate you because you got an award um, only a few days ago during this, during this Peter week. So um, I, I think I join others in congratulating that you for, for that award, for, for your achievements. Orascom, you're coming from a PIDA water ownership as far as transboundary projects are concerned. It would be interesting to hear from you, you know, some examples of how this scorecard will actually help with investment around some of those projects. Yes, and very grateful for the kind words. Um, we, we actually have a number of projects uh, that have um, fortunately, with blessings, I believe, um, been uh, picked or identified for, for, for the PDAP Hub 2. Um, this is a collective um, effort, and it's a collective effort depicting our partnerships, uh, partners like Global Water Partnership and the African Development and uh, AMCAO and others. Uh, trying to rally behind regional economic integration. Uh, in Southern Africa, I think uh, within SADC, there is a lot of progress being made uh, on many fronts in terms of uh, economic integration and cooperation in, on many fronts. But water is a little bit behind. What we are trying to mobilize is for all of us to look at the water resources collectively as an asset for the region and seek to address demand gaps in the various sectors and in the various geographic spaces of Southern Africa. So we believe that um, the scorecard will enable not only individual states, but I guess the collective to also be able not only to monitor and, uh, and, and maybe uh, uh, receive um, receive advice on how to address the gaps and issues like that, but also to collectively be able to benchmark uh, the region with other regions of the world, as well as uh, between the various corners of the region. Uh, we know that the good examples of transboundary cooperation as we speak are those that involve Lesotho and the Republic of South Africa, where water is being harnessed in South Africa to supply demands in the Republic of South Africa. But we are now expanding in the particular case of the Monday project to include three countries and a distance of about 700 kilometers. So we really believe that in the context of Orasicom, the scorecard is going to help us to keep the project and various other uh, wishes of transboundary water cooperation in Southern Africa on the spotlight at the highest level of uh, our residents and leaders of government, and therefore help us to deliver in a more effective and efficient way. I thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. So, you know, I, we've heard these four different perspectives from you know, the World Bank, OECD, the the Development Bank of Southern Africa and yourselves around the transboundary aspects. And just, I know we need to keep this short, but I'm just going to throw in one final question which each of you can just uh, respond to. You know, the water sector is underfunded. You know, the, 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 we're talking here about the importance of increasing government budget allocation, allocation to the water sector. 41% of the population of Sub-Saharan Africa has no access to water, which is quite a huge a percentage, over 400 million people. So how do governments compare national resource allocation towards water sector with investment needs of the sector? And perhaps I can start with you from the Development Bank of Southern Africa. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think it's, it, it's a very unfortunate thing if you think about the criticality of water. Uh, to our livelihoods, that the sector is underfunded. I think it's a misnomer because which other product can you substitute water for in globally? There's nothing. 
So, it, and, and, and therefore in, in economic terms, it's demand is in elastic. So it should have a very good business case, but the reality is that it is underfunded. And I think, uh, you know, governments really do need to look at increasing the proportion of budgetary allocation to, to, to the sector, because there is still in many ways reality that water is a public good. If government can build roads and they can invest significant amounts of resources towards roads, why are they not investing so much into the water sector? If you think about the, the, the population growth, if you think about the risks in terms of sources of water, if you think about the increasing demands in, 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 in our, our countries, it's clear that we really do need to prioritize resources to, to the water sector. I just give an example of how much Kenya raised uh, uh, for an infrastructure bond. Uh, it would be interesting to see how much of that $600 million, for example, is allocated towards the water sector. So there are possibilities in terms of values uh, that, uh, that can be used by government, whether they are uh, raising dedicated funds via the bonds market to enable, for example, pension funds, which have a lot of assets uh, under management to be able to contribute towards that development um, agenda. The options are many, and, and I think the water scorecard will, 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 will give us an, an, an idea in terms of helping us look at all of those matrices in one view and see that actually, if you look at the size of the financial sector, for example, and you see how much money there is going to the water sector, and you look at how much government is allocating there is a great mismatch. But maybe one last thing, obviously, is the fact that there is a need in the water sector to prepare projects. Uh, and maybe that explains why the budgetary allocation continues to be very low towards the water sector, because projects are not ready for investment. Uh, so perhaps we need to take a step back and invest a little bit more towards the preparation so that they can actually be financial flows towards those projects. Thank you. Thanks. And I think, for Dominic, what sort of conversations should these be very candid conversations that the World Bank should be having with governments? Um, not just um, the World Bank with governments, but governments with, with citizens. Because um, a key resource here is tariff revenue, revenue from uh, water sales. And the, the reason that pension funds don't rush to invest in water utilities is because tariffs don't cover uh, operation and maintenance costs, let alone capital costs. Yet, people who are not lucky enough to be connected to the utilities are paying more money to uh, vendors for, for their water. So if we could only make utilities sustainable financially, then like other sectors, they would crowd in private sector investments, as Graham has been saying, from pension funds and from many other places as well. So I think that's the frank discussion that we have to have um, with all stakeholders, but particularly between governments and citizens, that by not ensuring that, uh, that services are sustainable is actually a mistake. We do need to make sure that they're sustainable. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go to you, Kathleen, online there. You know, there's a $45 billion um, dollar annual deficit as far as investment in the, in the water infrastructure sector is concerned. Clearly, something is not being done here. And, and the conversation is private sector, private sector, private sector. You know, what? can be done, why is it not enough? And just if you could answer that very briefly. Yeah, yeah thank you. And I'll pick up on the last of the points. I'll highlight two key things. One is having good information and data, and that's where the AI platforms are part of a new school. You mentioned there's a, a gap between the budget allocation going to water and what is actually required in terms of investment. And that's quite large, but often we don't even know, how, we can't even quantify the actual financing flows for the water sector. We don't even have that kind of data. So if 
better data uh, and monitoring financing flows and understanding that gap is really important. So that's that hot information. The second, second one is um, picking up on what Dominique said, and uh, it's about the risk return profile of those. So if um, we want to crowd the commercial, commercial financers in, they need to have a, a risk return profile that's going to be attractive to them. And many of the investments in water and water resources management, oftentimes they just don't have the revenue streams and they have high associated with risks. And so we need to make those investments more attractive. And that's why the enabling environment to kind of come full circle is so important. So having tariffs in place, having some cash flow generated, but also working on the risk mitigation side is really important. Then thirdly, I would say um, we could do more uh, to reach out to the broader finance community. Um, uh, five years ago, the OECD, along with the World Bank, the World Water Council, and the Netherlands set up a platform for dialogue on finance and water. It's called the Roundtable on Financing Water. And really the purpose there is to have a dedicated place where finance, or excuse me, water, ex water experts and all the range of financiers who are active across uh, different types of investments in different contexts can come together to find practical solutions. We talk about mobilizing institutional investment. That's one profile, but there's also impact investors uh, who are active. Um, we see new funds and facilities being set up. We see some blended finance being used, combining development finance and commercial finance. So there's a lot of experimentation. There's also some very uh, good, good proven models that can be learned from this way. And so one suggestion I could like to wrap forward is especially financiers who are active on the continent, I think that would be really exciting and could be part of the learning process as, as this work moves forward. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathleen. And uh, uh, Lenka, I'm going to ask you the final question here. Um, you know, transboundary projects versus national projects. You know, there's in most of our African countries, a two-term limit and a lot of pressure to showcase impact um, as far as investment, particularly in water, uh, by governments, you know, to their constituencies, which is their primary focus, you know. So with this scorecard, what sort of conversations should be happening around the sust sustainability and more government commitment, and perhaps not just government, but other, pri other partnership commitment towards, um, you know, th th this investment to, into transboundary projects, but also seeing them as those that filter through to you know, benefiting national constituents? Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much for that question. And maybe just to hit a little bit on the initial conversation around financing that um, I was discussing with a colleague just earlier. The, one of the big challenges we have as water engineers and water managers is to sell the water projects as financially viable uh, initiatives. Uh, because a number of times uh, the, the, the tricky part of the questioning comes around the financial viability of um, the off takers, uh, return on investment. That language is very complicated when you look at the very nature of water, which is by and large very um, social, uh, is necessary. It, it's not a nice to have like a road, well, maybe. Uh, to some degree, but like other uh, amenities or requirements of life, water is critical to life itself. So in order to uh, supply the communities, which sometimes don't have uh, any um, income generating uh, activities for now, before the water comes, it can be very complicated. But in order to sustain um, water projects and water programs, whether they be transboundary or not, really is a matter of early on engaging with the beneficiary sectors out of, outside just water. Uh, one of the arguments we have in South Africa is that the political boundaries are really very artificial. Um, Lesotho is a very small country. I come from there, so I can afford to say that. Uh, but I don't think Basutu would be happy to see Botswana or parts of South Africa, at least 
running out of uh, water um, or access to water. So some of those traditional um, relations that we have as communities on the continent can probably boost some of the arguments that we have beyond the economics and the numbers. I thank you. Thank you very much. And on that note, our panelists, thank you very much for your contributions. Um, um, Mr. Grant Chinambu, uh, Dominic uh, Ravel uh, Devar from uh, the World Bank, Mr. Chinambu is from the uh, Development Bank of Southern Africa, um, Kathleen Dominique of OECD, thank you for joining us live from Paris, as well as um, Selenka Tamai of uh, Orescom. We want to thank you for those contributions. Time has not been on our side. But, you know, these are conversations that are not going to end in this room. We want to keep these conversations going because you have shared and we have heard earlier other profound key messages that actually will enrich, you know, some of the aspects that we want to do from an advocacy, from a political, from a policy and various uh, points of view as far as the AIP scorecard is concerned. In fact, I want to hasten to mention that to move this agenda forward, your excellencies and distinguished uh, guests, we will be rolling out or putting into operation this AIP Peter Water Investment Scorecard. Next week, we'll already be in Zanzibar for, the, for a very high level investment conference to be hosted by His Excellency, um, uh, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwini uh, of Zanzibar. Um, this will be on uh, March 10 and 11, as well as other excellencies and, and stakeholders in the water sector. And so, you know, this conference is going to bring together these leaders and other technocrats and other experts to put the issue of raising the much needed resources and investments under the spotlight. So here we are, we are already getting started with this. And um, to give us a bit of perspective, would like to end at least this session by showing you a video that points us to this uh, water investment conference that is coming up in Zanzibar. Thank you very much once again to our panelists and thank you very much, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and have a good afternoon. So we can play the video. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very wonderful uh, panel discussion with various insights from different partners. Uh, just some uh, of the partners that have been, been involved and has been mentioned, there are many more. And the conversation uh, continues. Uh, your Excellencies, we are taking forward your directives and your commitments and your leadership uh, to take the forward the conversations. And everyone here is invited to Zanzibar Water Investment Conference, which will go deeper. Uh, in terms of the investment scorecard uh, with perspective from different partners uh, from within the Saudi region as well as from within Africa and beyond. So thank you very much for this session, a uh, great panel discussion. Uh, and to close, uh, I'm going to invite uh, the African Union Commission
uh, unfortunately they're not able to join us physically, but thanks to Zoom, uh, we're going to hear a statement from Mr. Hassan Nyambe, uh, Director of Sustainable Environment and Blue Economy, African Union Commission from Addis Ababa. Mr. Hassan Nyambe, you have the floor for your closing remarks. Thank you, uh, Mr. Very much, uh, moderator. Uh, if I am able to recognize the presence of the death last, thank you, Mr. Moderator, as well as uh, His Excellency, Mr. Mokayaki, the CEO of uh, Outer Method, and uh, the Executive Secretary of a uh, Global Water Partnership. Uh, our partners, <laughs> We are actually grateful that uh, our leaders were able to grace this occasion. And of course, that's a token of a political commitment to the water agenda. And as we all know, water is critical for our development and is actually a catalyst of, uh, of uh, the realization of the uh, agenda. And uh, it's also that. Uh, uh, our water resources are actually dwindling, uh, dwindling in the sense that uh, they are threatened by the changing climate. And this is also actually exacerbated by the fact that uh, some of the water infrastructure are actually deteriorating and the maintenance is actually a challenge for the continent. And uh, while the situation is going The question now is uh, how do we ensure that we are able to attain uh, water security as envisioned in Agenda 2063? And uh, the same question can also be posed course, based on uh, SDG, SDG number six. How do we Therefore, the scorecard that has just been launched uh, quite a long way uh, in terms of uh, reforming uh, the development of policy policies uh, that will actually attract investments into the water sector. But uh, this, this, this scorecard will also actually contribute uh, to the de-riskings of some of those uh, investments. And from our end, where I stand as the African Union Commission, uh, this scorecard will actually contribute to other uh, initiatives that we already have in place, such as uh, the development of uh, the biannual review report for disaster as well as the review report, which are actually produced every second year. But uh, we are also embarking on uh, some of the programs that are aimed at uh, resilience building, especially in the Sahel, and we believe that uh, their water is a major challenge. challenge. And, uh, we're also able to uh, provide input. To and therefore, having said that, I would want to recognize again uh, the fact that our leaders were able to uh, set the scene and be able, be able to, to actually the immense contribution of uh, our method uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, Dr. Mayaki, or His Excellency Dr. Mayaki, and of course uh, the leaders that he's leading will like we'll to inspire, inspire all of us and generations to come. And I want also to also take this opportunity uh, uh, to extend the invitation to the Water Investment Conference. That is we look forward to everybody joining hands in supporting the implementation of this scorecard. With those few remarks, I pass the mic to the chair or the moderator. Thank you very much.
Thank you, uh, guests. Uh, thank you, online viewers. So we've officially come to the end of, of the session and thank you very much for your contribution. And also we thank the interpreters that have also uh, been with us. So your excellencies, with your permissions and uh, uh, guided by protocol, you were invited for a photo session uh, uh, over, there, over there, uh, together with the, the panelists who also made some presentations. So if the panelists who were over here can also we'll allow the, the excellencies first to have the photos, uh, and then we'll, we'll be joined by the, the speakers, and well as the moderator, Maureen. Thank you. 